thinking about going gray and especially now we're in self-isolation and we kind of start to see that skunk line at the top of our head and we're thinking, wait, is now the time to go gray or should I be coloring my hair while I'm at home? Well, today we have an incredible expert. Her name is Nicole Scott and Nicole is the founder of Own Your Sparkle and she's a holistic nutritionist and colleague of mine. And I'm really excited to have you on the show today, Nicole, because there are so many questions circulating about gray hair and the gray hair movement. So welcome to our show. Oh, I'm so glad to be here, Andrea. It's such a fun topic, especially right now where everybody is showing their beautiful gray line. <laughs> you know what I was, as I was getting ready for our interview this morning, I was looking at mine. Now I don't have a full hair, full head of gray, but I have a little bit at the top. It's kind of starting to come in and I do color my hair. And I thought, wait, I should hide it. But I'm like, no, 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 wait, hide it. I'm talking to Nicole, founder of Own Your Sparkle. I'm not hiding it. So yes, I've got some gray hairs at the top of my head right now, but I wanted, I really want to understand you are, so, you are at the forefront of this movement and the gray hair movement. We've been hearing a lot about it. Tell me why you decided to let your hair go gray. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, so the summer of 2018, I actually found two lumps in my breasts. Um, I first went to my naturopath and she was very concerned and suspicious. So she sent me to the medical doctor. The medical doctor was very suspicious. Um, I lived in a week of unknown. What if they are cancer? Um, and it was very scary because these were new lumps that I had never felt before. And if any woman out there has ever kind of gone through that unknown, that's what I had gone through. And in that week of unknown, this was was the question that I asked as a nutritionist and as a mom, Nicole, are you doing everything that you can in your control to minimize the chemical hit that shows up in your world? And when I started to deep dive, I came across hair dye because guess what? I was doing it every three weeks with my long, dark hair. It was coming in strong, ladies. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, it was like, I'd get my hair dyed like one week and I could already see it. And then like you're playing with all of the different chemicals and sprays and stuff. And so I, I was shocked. I was shocked that I was ignoring this, um, thinking that I would be okay. And so I didn't want to take a chance anymore. Um, and so I just decided in that moment that I just didn't want to do it. See, I took a picture of the label and I know you're a label expert, so you get this, right? So then what do you do? We go home and we research it. And, yeah. and, and this is what I came up with, Andrea. I came up with some of the, the ingredients in the particular hair dye that I was using at my hair salon was linked to cancer, organ toxicity, allergies, reproductive toxicity, and so much more. So I knew I needed to stop for me, for my health, because I wanted to be around a long time for my kids and I didn't want to live in the what if. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the research behind hair dyes. Now I dye my hair. I'm very open about it. And I do try to choose better for you hair dye. I am familiar. There's the ammonia. I want to talk a little bit about the research and what are the facts? What does the science say? But also what are some of those ingredients that we absolutely should be avoiding? Yeah, well, I mean, you just named the first one, right? Which is ammonia, right? It, it really impacts our lungs. There's a lot of research on that. Um, in my book, you know, Get Naked With Your Natural Hair Color, I have a whole chapter of research where I deep dive into these really toxic, you know, ingredients. Um, formaldehyde, that's another big one. Um, PPD um, is a short term, but the PPD is in most hair dyes. And it's one out of every hundred women or men that can have a very, very severe allergic reaction. And when I started to deep dive and start to interview people that had like almost nearly death experiences with PPD, um, and I have those stories in my book and I'm, my book launch is coming up on Saturday and I'm interviewing Dr. Mitra Ray, who had three horrible experience with PPD um, and almost um, took her out. So, I mean, it's really, really um, interesting how certain people can react to these ingredients and how it can impact their health. And when it comes to science, what right. is the science saying? What is that? You, you, know, you mentioned in the beginning that you had lumps on your breast. Now, you talked about it being linked to certain types of cancers. What is the science saying? Like the top, you know, one or two or three things that have been, I remember hearing years ago, 
and this was before I even started dyeing my hair, that there was a link between hair dye and bladder cancer. Now, I, I never actually did the research to find out if that was in fact reality, but what, is, what have you come across in your research? Yeah, so it's controversial um, in regards to, you, know, you. I went online and I found the research, like I found, I went to, you know, um, I think it's MedPub, where I went and I dug into the research and the research goes back to like 1970. Um, so the good news is that with the research that was coming out in the 70s and 80s and even 90s, um, uh, hair companies were paying attention to these ingredients linked to bladder cancer and breast cancer, and they started to remove some of those dangerous ones like coal tar. Um, and I believe that just got pulled out of the U.S. as well within the last year. So, I mean, here we are in 2020, and still these these highly toxic ingredients are just starting to come out of hair dye, which is really scary because the research has been around for 20 and 30 years. Um, I did use um, EWG, which is the Environmental Working Group. Um, what I loved about them is they had over 450 hair dyes that they had actually researched in the marketplace, the most common hair dyes that women are using. And out of those 450, based on their independent research, they had discovered that 400 of the 450, they classified it as a hazard. Wow. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. When it comes to dyeing our hair, because it is not for everybody to go gray. And, you know, even myself, I'm not there yet. And when the time comes, I guess I'll have to reevaluate. But right now I color my hair. What are some options for those of us who want to continue coloring our hair, choosing better hair dyes? Would that be the way to go? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have a whole chapter in my book about I'm not ready to go gray, Nicole. So now what? And I totally see you and I hear you. It is a very scary move for a lot of women because we're so attached to what we look like and what um, our hair represents. I totally get it. So I totally honor you. I respect you. Whatever your decision is, it is a personal decision. And I always say, I never judge a woman if they decide that, you know, gray is not their thing. That is okay. But there are great healthy options. So when I started to research, I actually found one company out of um, Australia uh, that um, has products, actually the first company, I believe, that has taken the PPD out of their product and all of the top 10 nasties. And there's another company out of Europe as well that did the same thing. So there are much better options for us today, ladies, which is so inspiring that companies have paid attention and realized that we need to make sure that we're putting high quality stuff on our skin. I'm going to link to the better hair dyes below. So we've got you because I do think it's something that's important for many of us to have those options should we want to not go gray. Well, my mom, who's 73 years old, she was thinking about going gray. So what we, we were talking about it, we're like, okay, how do you transition over? And I told her to go to a you know, to a store, this is before we were in self-isolation, and to put on a wig and to actually, you know, play around. Is that something that you would recommend for people who are looking to transition? Oh, absolutely. It's something we talk about in my Gorgeous Grey Movement private Facebook group. And uh, I've had women actually shave their entire head because they didn't want to do the dreaded process, but they bought themselves a beautiful wig for the grow up position. Um, but yeah, there's actually, I did a lot of research and there's a lot of like wig companies and it's kind of a thing more more and more women are wearing wigs so yeah you can go to a store check it out um when i first started i actually bought a gray ponytail <laughs> and it was really long and i put my hair back and i put it there and i was like oh i think i could like real like i could see myself so i did kind of the same thing i did the ponytail route um because my hair was about five inches out and then i just kind of matched it and i got excited so yeah that's a great option andrea yeah, and when it comes to our gray hair, it's a little bit more coarse than our regular hair. What are yeah. some recommendations that you have in order to keep it healthy and bouncy and kind of just looking great? Okay, so one of the things that um, in the beginning when I went through this journey that I never expected is I actually had more hair growth. 
but I didn't realize it was hair growth. I thought it was kind of breakage because that's all I was used to was breakage with all of my hair dye. But no, my hairdresser's like, Nicole, because I would get all of these little pieces and I would go out to the world and I just felt, you know, weird because my hair was like crazy. And she gave me this natural putty. So I learned in the beginning when I had all of these like little new hair growth pieces coming out, I used a putty. Um, but now that my, I don't have that like crazy small pieces of hair growth anymore, um, I use um, argan oil. And um, I just put a little bit here on my palm and I just put some in this morning and I just kind of, you know, tap it up and just put the oil right through my hair, just kind of smooth it through. You just need a tiny little bit. And that's pretty much my, my hair care for just keeping it in control. So it does become easy. In the beginning, it's a little crazy and you might have to use a natural putty that I just got from my um, organic hair salon. And the product that I'm using right now for my organic hair salon is called um, Organic color systems and they're from the UK. That's awesome. I, you know, the key is you really like the tips. And I think once you're starting to embrace the gray hair movement, I think understanding what we can do and simple things that we can do is important. And again, we're going to link to all the products Nicole's talking about below. We all, I, I just interviewed my hairdresser a couple of weeks ago, and she was talking about things that we can do while we're at home to keep our hair nice and bouncy, like putting in a leave-in conditioner, putting in like say, you know something like the argan oil is great or even coconut oil. So I am going to link to that as well at the end of this video and then below as well. All right. Let's talk about the stigma around gray hair. And why do you think women don't want to let their hair go gray? Now, being the co-founder of Morphous and understanding as we transition into perimenopause and menopause, because and, and many people, by the way, correct me if I'm wrong, my partner Randy went gray in her 20s. So it's not necessarily an age-related thing, but I do know as we get older, we're over 45, we go into menopause and perimenopause, we're going through so many changes as it is, what do you think that stigma is and why we don't want to let our hair go gray? Yeah, because we're holding on to youth and there's this whole image of when you are youthful and you look good, um, you become more desired and wanted and fit into society and liked more. And so I dug into this in a chapter because I was really curious about, you know, where did it come from? And I mean, ladies, if you have some free time on your hand, just research the, the commercials that women got exposed to in the 50s and 60s around hair dye. And you'll probably want to cry. I mean, I'm so grateful that so many women have um, led a movement of strength and beauty and authenticity on their own to kind of say that, you know, we don't have to wake up in the morning with heels and a dress and lipstick on to please our man. But those were the commercials that women were exposed to. And what's interesting, Andrea, is that I find the women that are most resistant to going gray are the women that were born and in that era of the 50s and 60s, because I believe they were brainwashed. They were, we were brainwashed from that media is this is the way that we needed to show up. This is the way that we needed to look. And if we didn't, we did not fit in and you were the sheep. That was the message. So the younger generation, so much easier to have a conversation with now about this, but the older one, not so much. Well, I think the younger generation also understands the you know, chemicals and how it affects our body, whether it's the food that we're eating or the personal care products we're putting on our body. And obviously hair dye falls into personal care products. So I think the younger generation gets it. And the older generation, you're right, grew up in that generation. But even Gen Xers, and talking about myself, is when we get into, let's say, perimenopause and menopause, there is that stigma of aging. So whether it's the, you're talking about when it comes to gray hair or whether it comes to other things around this phase of life, it makes sense what you're saying. Absolutely. And I had to deep dive in my own journey. Like I lived in the fear. I lived in the unknown. I had no idea what I was going to look like. I had no idea how I was going to feel about myself, but I just took a chance. It was like, like living in that. What if you could actually look beautiful and feel beautiful in gray hair? So I kind of just leaned into it 
in the what if, in a fear, but also excitement at the same time. And I have to say, I'm so glad I did. Um, it's been an amazing journey and I will never go back to dye my hair because I actually like myself better in gray, which for me was shocking because I, like I said, was so nervous about it. And now when I kind of see old Facebook uh, photos of like three years ago or four years ago and I got long, dark hair, I'm like, girlfriend, you look better in gray than you did in dark. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. And it's also about self-acceptance, right? Did it take you, how long did it take you to get used to seeing yourself with gray hair and actually loving it the way you do now? Yeah. Well, here is something that I would recommend women you would do to invest in yourself is I actually did um, a naked photo shot of um, photo session of myself. And it was, I'm, I'm heading into 50 um, this year. And it was a gift to me to say, own your body. We talked about this before, Andrea. It's like, I've, I've put on some extra weight. Um, it started creeping up and uh, I was like, oh my gosh, like, can I love myself with this extra weight on me? Can I still be the same person? Can I still be this healthy life expert and still be credible with some extra pounds on me? Like, it's a scary thing to go through. And I know, and I'm so grateful that you're like bringing this to the forefront to women because, you know, it happens to a lot of us. So the, I, what I recommend you do is do a photo session and I felt so beautiful I got my makeup done professionally I got my hair done and you know even though I had extra weight on me because you know you kind of get your set weight for years and all of a sudden like 10 pounds 15 pounds shows up and you're like oh my gosh but I did that photo shoot as a gift to myself of aging and beauty and the more that I saw those pictures the more that I fell in love with that that like I'm okay I'm okay with that extra weight on. I'm actually okay with my gray. So it just kind of, you just kind of morphed into it to a place where it like, this is great. This is okay. And yeah, it's, it, I mean, it didn't happen overnight, ladies. It takes some time. Um, but the more that you just lean into being authentic and you and being okay with that extra weight and not judging you, yourself so much, um, it's a freedom. That's the word I use. Just more freedom. No, it's a, it's a very good word. Did you find that you changed up your makeup routine because your hair no longer was brown or let's say for myself, I put in highlights in my hair and I've been using a certain makeup routine for many, many years. Did you find that you had to change it up in order to work on your complexion or perhaps the coloring? Yeah, a little bit. And my clothes, like the changes of clothes, like trying to wear brighter colors versus like, I used to just like, like black and white. And um, so yeah, just to bring in new colors and change of lipstick, um, brighter, right? So I follow some beauty women that are in, in the, you know, field of like silver and gray, and I follow their makeup tutorials. And so I've had to learn how to um, change up the makeup a little bit. I don't wear a lot of makeup. It's interesting. I used to think that I had to get up every morning and put makeup on and, you know, be that fresh version and go out to the world. But a lot of days I actually don't wear makeup. Um, and I'm okay with that. And um, I would have never thought that I would be okay without makeup and going out there to the world. So people will see a lot of my videos online. I won't be wearing any makeup and then I'll wear makeup. So it, it, it's again, it's a peace of mind that you can go either way and still feel beautiful. I love that you're talking about the clothes and making yourself brighter and wearing brighter things. I think that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing recently how a lot of celebrities are endorsing their gray hair. For example, my mom and I were talking yesterday about Jane Fonda and how she let her hair go gray, who I'm just, I like love Jane Fonda. Yeah. And who are some of your gray hair heroes that you would say, yep, and they inspired me or I just love what they're doing. Something that makes you feel really good about yourself. Yeah. Well, when I saw Christy Brinkley um, announced that she was embracing her gray, I was like, oh my gosh, here is like the most beautiful, healthy, sexy, amazing supermodel in the world. And uh, she's finally embracing it. So she was kind of an inspiration for sure. Jane Fonda, like um, I watched her documentary a couple of years ago. I just love what she stands for. I mean, she looks so beautiful in her 80s. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is another one that ended up just like owning it. Um, probably one of the first in Hollywood. Uh, and I know Oprah um, just put out in her magazine, her online magazine, the top 
30 most inspirational women that have gone gray. So you can just research it and I can give you the link and you can knock yourself out and go through those 30 women. Um, so inspiring. One of the women in that actual um, uh, magazine is featured in my book. Her name is Janine Glover. I followed her for a while and then we became friends and she is gorgeous. She used to be a model um, and she actually shaved her head in honor of her niece who had cancer at age 11. And so we started our journey together um, at the same time and we're, our hair, the, the, the funny thing about it is, and this is a good point ladies, is her option was to shave her head and she let her hair go. So two years later, her length is about the same length as mine now. We have about actually the same length. I decided not to shave, but to do blending and probably spend $2,500 of blending over the two years. So I didn't have to go through that crazy. And so we joke about it. She's like, you know, I saved money <laughs> and, um, and you spent a lot of money to do the blending for the same results. <laughs> That was going to be my question. Why shave your head versus, so you're saying for to shave your head because then it all grows in together as gray, as opposed to having to blend out the roots from the rest of your hair and actually doing, okay. So that would be the reason that you would want to shave versus blend it. But it, it really comes down to a, what you prep, what you prefer and also financial, right? Yeah, absolutely. The financial is a big one for women, right? So I just going to warn you that if you're going to do a blending experience, I probably invested about $2,500 um, to eventually get to a blending experience with probably every six to eight weeks of like going into the hairdresser. Um, I did use an organic hairdresser though, to be more healthier and to really protect my body. But yeah, from a saving standpoint, for sure, I would say the majority of the women in my group um, typically will cut their hair off and do a pixie and be able to transition between three and six months and then grow it out. That seems to be the more common one. Um, there are the brave ones though that decide to go cold turkey, long dark hair and let it come in. And once it gets to about here, it starts to look like an ombre. And it actually looks really, really cool. But you have to be patient. That first three to six months, you don't want to go out to the world. You want to wear a hat or a toque. <laughs> Or, a, or a, you know, a, something to cover it up. When we think of men, we think who have gray hair, we think of distinguished, we think of, you know, sexy and gorgeous. When you think of women with gray hair, what comes to mind for you? Before my gray hair, I was thinking, yeah, it's not for me. You know, um, I want to feel young. I want to feel youthful. I want to feel sexy. So that was my old perception. Now that I am gray, and now that I see more women with gray, I've changed my perception. I've changed my story. So I'm going to admit, I actually have some girl crushes on some of these women that are gray. I think it's a total package, right? It's, you know this, Andrea, you're, you're a healthy life expert. It's when we feel good in our body, when we're eating the good food, when we're moving our body, when we're, you know, drinking our water, when we're doing our infrared sauna, when we're, you know, getting into that. And then this is just an added, you know, thing. Um, it all is a total package. So um, for me now, when I see a woman gray, I, I love on her. I usually hug her. I connect with her. Um, I want to know her story. Um, and so I totally get the before and after. It's a story that you change in your head. If you've never had a good gray hair role model that looks good and feels good and, um, and goes out to the world with a high vibration, if you've only had, like for me, an aging grandparent, that scares the crap out of you. You're like, I don't want to be like my grandma. I don't want to be aging. I don't want to be in a wheelchair. So then you fear it. You naturally fear it. I don't want to go there. But if you have somebody like my mom who went just in her early 50s, who is a health advocate and, um, and you have a role model, it gives you hope. <laughs> exactly. So it'd be basically women with gray hair would be the same as men, distinguished, sexy, gorgeous, right? And that would be the goal to get there. And, and we are getting there, like people like yourself who are helping us get to where we need to be in order to really erase and change that stigma. So thank you for what you're doing and for really plowing forward. Is there anything that you'd like to share with our audience that you feel that we may have not covered today? Final thoughts. So if I could um, share with you the top three responses that I get from women who have transitioned in my group, 
Uh, this, the first one is the more freedom. That's the number one. I just feel more freedom, more freedom from having to go to that, you know, hair salon every three weeks, more freedom from not stressing out when the next time I'm going to be able to squeeze in that appointment into my day timer. And I was so there ladies. I was, I couldn't tell you some, some weeks how stressful I was about when am I going to get there for this event? And my, my calendar is full, right? So do I do it at home and screw it up potentially? Because my hairdresser hated when I did box dyes because she just said I ruined my hair. So that would be the first one. Um, the second one uh, is better health, better health. So if I, I, I think in my book, I have like a list of 125 responses when I did what happened you know, what improved, you know, when I stopped dyeing my hair. And these were some of the responses. Um, my migraine stopped. Oh my gosh, I was so shocked. My, my headaches, um, my skin improved. A lot of women were having skin issues that they didn't relate it to um, hair dye. Uh, what else? Oh, a lot of women concerned about their balding spots. All of a sudden, um, their hair grew in. So thicker, healthier, stronger, shinier. Um, so improved health was a big one. Uh, and then the third one, of course, is saving time and money. So I just wanted to share that because I know there's a time right now where everybody's sitting there not knowing what to do. And maybe those three responses might be your inspiration to just try it. Just try it. What if? What if? Very, very inspirational, Nicole. Thank you so much for being on our show. We're going to link to Nicole, how you can find her on social media below, but why don't you just tell people how they can find you anyhow? Yeah. So my handle in social media is on Instagram or Facebook, and you can follow me on Own Your Sparkle. And we do daily content and education around that. And for those women that want to be in a private women's group only, um, where you want to see more stories, where you want to see more webinars, where you want to see, you know, personal before and after, um, my group on Facebook is called Gorgeous gray movement. You just need to search it, find it and ask to join and I will invite you in um, and you can be part of our vibe. And there's no judgment. If you just want to come and peek and you're not ready yet, that is okay. I, I, women, something will click when it's the right time. And we just love everyone um, at whatever stage you're at. And it might take some people years before they want to do it, but it's great to be part of a group, a sisterhood. That's what I like to call it, our community of women who are kind of interested in that same thing, whether it's for today or down the road. It's all about education. And that's the key to what you do and to what we do. So thank you so much, Nicole. If you got value out of today's show, please give us a big like and make sure that you subscribe to our channel because we have new videos that come out every single week. And please share it with your family and friends because the more you share, shows you care and the more that we can help educate people on living a healthy lifestyle. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time.